You can do it. <laughs> Winter Filipino has revealed. Yeah. And it's been three days in a row snowing. Yeah. You can see the layer of snow is very thick. Yeah. And there is nothing else to discuss in this snowy time than the Philippines. Yeah. The topic of today is the Philippines and the questions about um, my family um, regarding with the relationship with Cuba so there was um, a viewer who commented it in our previous YouTube video and he listed some questions there and he would like to hear answers from me so we are planning to make um, that video today answering some questions regarding our relationship what are those reactions, impressions of my, of my family to our relationship? So as Gwen was mentioning, we are going to discuss those topics. My impressions when I came there for the first time, meeting with Filipino family. Gwen is impressed of the snow. Because, um, because last year, I, I haven't seen like this. Last year, the snow was not that thick as right like this year. And I'm very surprised. Like Crazy. Oh what happened? What happened? Oh, of course it's real. You can bury me later in the snow. I will bury you in a moment. Yeah. It's insane. So, <coughs> the first thing we need to do is to dig out a car. You can see some people really have to dig through the snow to get to their cars. But lucky for us, I already did today. We are going now and very surprised because the cars are buried with the snow. You cannot even see cannot even see cars anymore. Let's see if Cuba would survive taking the car out away from the snow. The rules in the check says there should be no snow on the car, but I'm not crazy to getting out every piece of snow. Really? That's the rule here? There should be nothing on the roof. So you should have to remove it. Baby, remove You're it. You're welcome. Huh? You're welcome. Okay, I will remove it. No. Baby! You will be prisoned. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> it's like mud. It's like same as muddy. Snow, no cars. Vehicles can be buried as well with the snow. So it's so crazy. We are it? free. I feel like an astronaut. It should be you driving. I feel like I'm astronaut. You are Yeti, Filipino ah! Yeti. I mean the Yeti. You don't know who is Yeti? No. Uh -huh. Gypsy? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> there is gonna be drifting on the snow with the car. <laughs> Let's see what will happen to us. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You will enjoy it. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot see cars anymore. It's full of snow. Look. Oh, 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 what was that? What was that? I would say the riding on the snow is the same way in the Philippines. People are riding in the mud when it's rain, when it's raining. Yeah. But good thing snow is not that dirty as mud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. But it's crazy, like... Oh my god, I can't even walk properly. And that's why I hate it, because yesterday, it's supposed to be like just 10 minutes of walking going to bus station but it took me 20 minutes i was struggling there and i was like i was really lost and confused which where is the passageway because everything is full of snow so i was very confused and 
there were instances I also saw people falling down from the snow because they did not know it was deep and they were just walking and it was crazy okay Kuba will try to ride on the snow we'll see if he will get stuck because earlier we were here but he went back again because <laughs> I guess he can go through the snow in this area is very thick okay let's see if he can do it <laughs> baby I guess you can it's too it's too thick you'll get stuck there <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> the car is about to give up. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> no! <laughs> Were you inside? <laughs> My leg hurts. Crazy. It's ready for skiing. Yeah. So Jacob is planning to have an ice bathing <laughs> so let's see and he's not like ready getting ready for the ice bath are you feeling cold you're eternal <laughs> Baby, smile! Why does it smile? Good! Uh, it's very nice. <laughs> Do you feel like your body is being stick by needles? Not yet. Later. Ah. Yes, I'm not sure. 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 Kuba is going to what? What's this one, baby? What's this? We will be sledging. Sledging? But we will not climb on the mountain. <laughs> I'm tired. There will be something else. So we are going to do some sledging, but we are not going to climb in the mountain, but something else. <laughs> I'll show you how it looks like, because. Kuba told me that when they were younger, his father used to do it for them. So he wants me to experience it. So we are here on the closed road. Ready? Ready. Let's go. Okay. We... Gwen is going to need a rope. <laughs> and that's all what she needs. <laughs> that's all? Yeah. What? Make sure it's tight. It is. <laughs> here, madam. Here is your right. <laughs> Hold on. I'm riding here and Kuba's going to drive me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's this? I don't know. <laughs>
my face is real frozen uh, all the ice went to my face and now it's frozen <laughs> where's the eyeglass yeah. oh it's crazy it's too cold I love <laughs> so it. how was it <laughs> amazing I love it <laughs> yeah I want as well what so you have to drive I don't know how to drive okay <laughs> <laughs> And that was our day, and we can finally move on to the topic discussion. Yeah. But we will transfer it to some warmer place, I guess. Are you frozen? Yeah, my face is frozen. Why are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at home. So we are going to start discussing about the three questions given by Asgar. First, I would like to um, discuss it with Kuba and I would like to ask him first or what was his first impressions about my family before meeting them and after meeting them in the Philippines. Well, my first impression of coming to the Philippines was like I went totally to the different world. <laughs> I went to the third world country and it was quite shocked from me because I was coming from Europe but talking about the family I was very excited to meet Gwen's family all the members and at first I met her siblings who are living in the province I was keen on from the Europe when you are going to visit someone it doesn't matter if it's the first time seeing family members or friends you have to bring you have to bring something i i brought roasted chicken chicken lechon yeah and we were all eating together and i get very close to gwen's sister's boyfriend uh, why i got only close to him because he was the only one who was not shy to me speak in english but the other siblings, when I came to the to their house, it was house full of people, friends and siblings. And once European entered, the house was empty in a couple of seconds. <laughs> I was thinking if they are scared of me or if they are shy to me and I did not understand or if they, did, if they don't like me. <laughs> that was on my mind, like I did not even talk to them and already they don't like me. But... After that, Gwen explained they are shy, they are shy to speak English to me because they think my English is like different level, but <laughs> English is not my native language, you know. So there is no reason for Filipinos to be shy to speak in English, but I understand they are. But the meeting them was very nice for me, very comfortable. I felt like accepted from Gwen's sister so much and I'm grateful for that. And after that, I went to visit Gwen's eldest brother, and it's like uh, <laughs> the biggest what <laughs> biggest challenge for me because the eldest brother, the head of the family, and I came to the room and he's looking like very strict to me, <clears throat> and that time I did not brought any gift, I guess. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> no, I did and we have this culture in the Philippines called pasalubung. What's that? You have to always bring gift. I brought Even my. Us, I brought myself to our family. If, for example, we are just going to the city for a while and we are going home, we should always bring something. I brought myself. <laughs> but yeah, um, he should um, face my eldest brother because since my parents are deceased already, so it's only my eldest brother is the head of the family. So that's the reason why I brought him, him, him there. But yes, my eldest brother is very strict and everyone is very scared of him, even me. <laughs> so that time I was also very scared. Yeah, and I was super scared. And then I came there, we were sitting on the sofa. There were also Gwen's brother's friends sitting around. And <clears throat> I sat next to a woman and she was very friendly and talking to me and telling me I was very shy. I was red like an apple, <laughs> nervous. And she was like very friendly, I tickled on be shy, oh my god, we are just the people. And yeah. then a delivery man brought the foods and I was thinking, okay, they are going to have a dinner or something, we are have to leave. And then 
Luan's brother said, Jacob, come here, sit down and eat. <laughs> There You're was. not allowed to refuse if Filipinos will, like if there is a Filipino who will invite you for foods, you're not allowed to refuse it because that means disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> so I sat to the table and the food looks delicious. The foods, some of them was the first time I could ever see and I had a plate and Gwen gave me like the foods like rice with pork, chicken this. and shrimp was my first time eating shrimps. I had no idea how to eat that. <laughs> they, were just, they did not tell me you have to peel the shrimp. I just took the shrimp and put it all to my mouth. My, babe, my brother was like, what is he doing? <laughs> Why is he eating the entire shrimp yeah. without peeling it? So the first impression <laughs> to her brother was like, is he stupid or is he, where did he came from that he doesn't know how to and eat the shrimp? This really reminds me of what happened that night because that time I was very busy and I needed to prepare plates so I had to wash it outside not enough plates for everyone because so many people were there as well and Kuba was chasing me even outside I was even telling him like stay there just talk to my brother I don't want to I'm stay there alone <laughs> I, I was like I was going everywhere somewhere and then he's just chasing me and we don't chase me here just stay there talk to my brother what are you doing <laughs> why are you very scared yeah, and then I went outside to Gwen, like I, <laughs> my reason to go outside was to help her cleaning the plates and her brother asked me, Jacob, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to help with the plates and <laughs> crazy, that woman's job. <laughs> yeah. Well, here in Europe it's not, but I understand the culture, but still I went with the plates because I would be there alone. My brother looks very strict, like yeah, he looks very strict. At the same time, he is also very strict as well, but he's very friendly and he's very fine. Yeah, I have huge <laughs> respect for him, but I believe in the future, the ice between us will be broken. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I would. I wanted to ask as well, what was your, what was your impression to my family before meeting them? I knew some of. Gwen's siblings because we were also talking on the video calls and messages and I did not have any bad impressions of them just there was one case because brother was like bad boy yeah <laughs> but then I changed my mind but my opinion about your siblings were like well, I was excited to meet them I was just disappointed all of them run away. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's not that they don't like you, but it, they were very, very shy and scared of you. So, <laughs> What have been your family from Philippines thinking about your relationship with European men from Czech Republic? Shortly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So I did I don't really know much about their impressions because we were long distance with Cuba that time for two years. So they thought this relationship was not serious because it was COVID time as well. And for them, mm, it's really impossible for you to meet because I also heard that from them. So they really like just, I guess, didn't care. But it was also very surprising for me because my family is very strict about me having a boyfriend. When I was still studying in university, they were always telling me, my mom, my eldest brothers, because imagine I have eight brothers. And then they were telling me, if we will catch you having a boyfriend, we will kill you. <laughs> so I was very scared of having a boyfriend. So I decided myself not to get a boyfriend and just finish my university up until COVID time. Then I met Kuba. And we were in long distance relationship. It was also my first time um, introducing to my family that I have a boyfriend. You know, I have a boyfriend from Europe and like that. And then like, mm, it's COVID time. It's impossible for you to meet. So we don't care. It's like that. So um, that time they were like happy. Like sometimes when I'm calling Kuba on video chat, I would just... Um, tell to my family that I have my boyfriend here and he would like to say hi to you and they're like saying hi but maybe because also of the language barrier since my family really can't speak English fluently though Philippines is well known for being an English country but still my family cannot speak English so I would say um, 
they really did not care <laughs> about me having a boyfriend but also because I became the head of the family as well after my parents died as I am the breadwinner of the family so um, I did my own decision without my family's approval and they were not able to be against from me but you did not answer how was your first meeting with my parents my family yeah how was my first meeting so how? um for me it was very nice because um i could really feel that i was very welcomed they prepared foods for me and when i went out the car his mom and dad really ran to me and hugged me and it was also my first time like experiencing like that meeting my partner's family and then experiencing a warm welcome so it was very nice for me and they're very very nice people as well if i will find the picture there was like the whole way whole day traveling like for gwen from the philippines to Czech republic <laughs> also i went by train to the prague to the airport to pick up gwen it was all day traveling we arrived home about 10 pm and this is how we looked for the first time in our house together with my parents. <laughs> you have it. the picture, right? It's in your mom. Oh, it oh, was oh. your mom took the picture. Yeah, because last time your mom showed it to me. Yeah. And the last question here. Have they been happy about your relationship or they have been saying you should get proper man from the Philippines? Oh my god, I wouldn't say that Philippine there are a lot of proper man in the Philippines. <laughs> because um, the, there is really um, this advantage between foreigners and Filipinos. Though Filipinos are very sweet by words, <laughs> foreigners are into like acts of service, which Filipinos do not have. So that time, um, I didn't hear anything bad about my family that um, they were telling me that I should get another like Filipino man because it was really my decision. Um, my family cannot do anything for my decisions. Even it happened that we have this kind of um, culture that you should introduce your partner, even your boyfriend, to the entire family. At that time, I didn't allow he him to meet my grandparents, my uncles and aunts. Um, I explained him why, because I was avoiding these things that they will think that he is a foreigner for sure, he has money, and if Jacob will not give them something they will be mad because these things happened to my cousin she married um, a korean and when the korean guy visited my entire family they expected that he should give something to them especially money so they were very angry to my cousin yeah, i remember so when i found out that it should be really me who will take the whole family like really whole family could be 50 people right yeah to no it's beach. not even 50 people we have like maybe 100 and plus but, <laughs> better and i should all take them to the beach and spend the day with them yeah. and buy the foods i cannot i cannot imagine how i would transport them to all people if it's here i would get the tractor the biggest trailer i would throw them all of them to the trailer and when i'm there i would just chuck them to the beach with the trailer yeah, then and i would all, all and of your talking expenses. about the foods and the drinks we were eating when we were in the philippines rice with rice <laughs> So I would say that I'm always against from traditions and as well as culture. So I married Kuba without my siblings approval and without my extended family's approval because we have this kind of culture as well. If this woman is from province, the family is very traditional that you should follow this culture called Pamanhikan. That means a man should bring his entire family, go into the woman's family asking the woman's entire family if he is allowed to marry her and he should bring a lot of foods as well for the entire family i didn't let him do that because i don't want to and as again as well kuba's family are in europe so he cannot do that kuba can do, just go there alone by himself but still i didn't allow him because for sure they will expect that kuba is a foreigner and he should give them money so I didn't have allow him to do that. Do you have a ring from our proposal? <laughs> or not here? I don't know, I forgot. Oh, yeah, I will show it. I, I have it there. The story about our proposal. I went to the Philippines for one month and we've been in the relationship with Gwen for already like one and a half year. 
And after that one and a half year, I went to the Philippines to meet Gwen for the first time. And the last day of my stay, I went to the airport, I was waiting for my plane and I was running in my head, oh my god, I really love that girl, she's amazing. And Gwen that time was still at work and after work she was coming to me to the airport to say like last hello, goodbye, see you again soon. And I really realized I want to marry that girl and make a proposal. But I was in the airport, there were no stores, nothing, just a little store with souvenirs. And I bought this, the most amazing, the biggest, biggest ring ever in the world. Proposal <laughs> ring for just one or two dollars. <laughs> and I proposed Gwen there in the airport. Yeah, with the biggest, it doesn't fit even to my finger because oh. it's too big. <laughs> but I'm keeping it, it's very important to me. Sure. I don't want to lose it. You know how much value it has? Of course, it's one million. Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for me, I don't care. Um, I already don't care about rings because I don't like wearing rings as well. I'm not even wearing our wedding ring because it's so annoying for me. So I don't really care if he will give me what kind of ring during our wedding or proposal because for me, it's just a ring and money is more important than just ring. And we value our marriage, we value our relationship more than just having a ring so we all know our feelings together that we love each other and doesn't mean to have something like some rings to like expensive rings to wear just to prove that we love each other right you will invest this money for better things that's true i agree as well it's very beautiful right it's like mm -hmm. sparkling yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> plastic with plastic <laughs> but it's very nice it's it's not going to like be rusty yeah because it's plastic <laughs> yeah so i guess that's all um do you have anything to say about like more things about your experiencing experiences with my family when you came to the philippines not or... really that's all for today guys all those questions were answered you could also see in the beginning how we spent our sunday after three days of snowing it was like a little vlog and little discussion in this video thank you so much for always watching our youtube videos and thank you so much as well for always supporting us so if you like this video you can click the hit and subscribe button and see you next time bye bye